Hello, hello again, everyone. This is Mitch Natsu. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to boost your English skills using English content and some cool extensions on the computer. Today, we're gonna be focusing on our vocabulary and listening, and most importantly, our comprehension skills. I'm gonna show you what study methods that you can actually skip, which might be the most important part uh, in this video. So stay tuned until the end of this video. As always, if you have got any questions, comments, please let me know. Uh, I would love to hear what you have to say. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, you're more than welcome to as well. All right, let's get right into it. First of all, I want to show you a super handy cool extension on Chrome, uh, which is called a Language Reactor. It's a fantastic tool. I usually use Safari for the um, data sake, um, but I use Chrome for um, studying English. Let me quickly introduce some cool features of Language Reactor. With Language Reactor, you can toggle Japanese and English subs um, on and off very, very easily. Additionally, when you hover your cursor over the um, subs, uh, subtitles they reappear without you having to toggle them on and off uh, manually let's say you're watching uh, content without subtitles but you want to check a word like one specific word but you don't have to turn on and off the subtitles manually if you hover your cursor over there um, you can check the word or even like the whole sentence on the right side as you can see um, there is a script that can also be switching on and off very easily if you click the word you can check the pronunciation very 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 easily to another fantastic feature of this extension is you can listen to the audio of one sentence like one specific sentence do you know what skills you can improve by using that future to listening as you can imagine and especially you can get used to linking sounds in English it lets you understand what's said naturally like what's spoken naturally you're looking for a long-term change you're looking for a long-term change or that they can be developed like a muscle or that they can be developed like a muscle. There's so many amazing features though uh, for now. Uh, let's move on to how to use the, the extension and some English contents. Uh, by the way, when it comes to um, contents, uh, I can't talk about them all together in this video. So I have created a PDF, which I shared some videos, movies, and uh, TV shows that I recommend to you guys, depending on your English levels. So uh, if you're interested, uh, please check the uh, description down below. How can we use language reactor and English contents um, effectively? The first step will be I will listen to the content with Japanese subtitles. Don't say a thing yet, uh, let me explain. If you are an intermediate uh, learner, uh, probably you can uh, challenge yourself. Feel free to watch the video uh, with English subs or without subtitles at all. However, um, afterwards, uh, please, please make sure to watch that video with Japanese subtitles. I'm gonna explain why. Uh, just as an example, you know, some people move to English speaking countries such as Australia, New Zealand, I don't know, the States or England, and some of them, only some of them, um, successfully able to improve their language skills. And a lot of people assume that it's all because of the, the environment. Wow, because you live in the States, but I don't believe so. I believe what they did was they tried so hard to match what was happening around them to the language, if that makes sense. Here's another easy, I mean, even like a ridiculous example. Let's say you give a present to your friend. Nine out of ten, your friend is gonna say and um, thank you to you. And then you would be able to understand what your friend meant because you understand what thank you means in Japanese. It's also because you understand how thank you is used. So you say thank you when you appreciate something or you appreciate someone. So you can understand what thank you means easily because you understand the translation and you understand the context and situation. So those two facts are so essential. In Japanese school, what we do 
I mean, what we had to do was how to translate from Japanese to English perfectly. Alas, we never learn how to use those expressions or how they are used. That's the reason why I recommend you guys to watch the video with Japanese subs first, because you need to have a decent understanding of what's happening in that video. Otherwise, what you are going to hear is going to be um, just a noise, a random noise, which doesn't make sense to you and you're never going to learn anything from it. And the second one is read the script. Um, I'm not going to go into listening yet. Um, I try to read the script first and sort of discern all the phrases, I mean, the meaning and definition of each word and check pronunciation as well. Here's, as you can see, um, the script appears on the right side. And if you hover the cursor, you can check the definition and also you can check the meaning of the whole sentence. I mean, the one segment, so you don't have to worry about anything. So I'm not sure if you like this idea, but I recommend you guys to write down the, the script on your notebook. It might seem tedious. I think it's going to be effective in the end um, because essentially it's going to build up your uh, vocabulary, grammar and reading skills, check your understanding. And if there are some words that you don't understand really well, feel free to check the meaning and listen to the pronunciation as well. If you're stuck on grammar and meaning, um, use ChatGPT, especially after they update it. I think they're much, much better. Usually I ask ChatGPT um, something like uh, tell me the translation of this sentence in an easy Japanese and please explain the words and grammar that I use in the sentence. They are very friendly. You don't have to worry about asking uh, stupid questions. I'm going to show you some questions that I often ask ChatGPT. The first one is list synonyms of the words used in this sentence. And what is the nuance of this word? Uh, is it similar to some Japanese words? Um, I try to come up with like similar uh, words in Japanese. And and what's the origin of this word? Um, because I'm such a nerd, so I like to ask a bit of, you know, deep question every now and then. Um, by doing this, I think you can improve your vocabulary and grammar and comprehensions like overall. Here's something exciting. After you finished watching the video or like discerning all the meanings and everything, when you look at the notebook, here is your customized textbook. I mean, the memos that you made, which is essentially what you didn't understand before. And then there's some underlines for words. You can see the progress like physically. You basically created your own textbook, uh, which I believe it's much more efficient than using the textbook that are given from school or recommended by uh, random people. I think it's literally um, proactive learning and I love the concept. Here's one thing that I recommend you guys not to do, and that is making vocabulary list. I have been there. I have done that. That's why I'm telling you I, I used to do it very hard. But when I reflect upon it, uh, I don't think it was super effective. Vocabulary list will help you fill in the blank kind of test, you know, in school. However, in an actual conversation, it doesn't go like that. And I think making that sort of flashcards or like making a list on, you know, like this means that it kind of deprives your um, flexibility, if that makes sense. So you get really really stubborn so what you can do is only like connect this word to a one specific Japanese word you just try to translate everything perfectly instead of trying to master every word I recommend you guys to take note of how they are used in the in the video and I believe that is enough for now another cool fact to consider is um, have you heard about the 80 20 rule I think this rule applies to an English um, especially um, vocabulary Basically, 80% of the words that you use come from only 20% of the vocabulary that you have in your head. So unnecessary words will naturally fade away from your memory. And while important words will reappear in different contexts. In Japanese, there is a word um, goem. So if you've got a goem with that word, um, they will come up to you again. So you don't have to try so hard to memorize like each word with like 100% focus. I think what you can do is if you see them very often, yeah, try to learn them. But if you don't see them very often, probably they're not worth it. I mean, it sounds a bit weird, but um, probably you don't need them at all. 
Next step will be listening with English subs. What we want to do here is you listen to the content and match what's happening with the language. We don't need to translate everything from Japanese to English. Understanding is the most important thing because we already understand what's happening in that video. Now, what we are going to do is with the knowledge that we have already, we match what's happening with English and this is actually a real understanding. You don't have to be able to translate every single word but at least get the idea of what's being said and connect that to that language if that makes sense. If you can't do that in a real conversation like you know it's very spontaneous you will be able to understand because you are good at picking up words and discerning the meaning of the phrase or each word, not translating. Can you see the difference? After you listen to the audio, uh, let's move on to reading aloud. I'm a huge fan of this practice. You can listen to one segment, like one specific segment over and over. So you listen to it and try to repeat after that. Now, I said, I have over a decade of demonizing stress now, I said I have over a decade of demonizing stress. To redeem myself from. To redeem myself from. Don't read like each word like this. Instead, try to copy as much as you can. I'm such a huge fan of this practice and I literally I've been doing this for more than uh, 10 years. So the key here is with Language Reactor, listen to one segment. I mean, the audio of one segment over and over. Try to copy as much as you can. I mean, try to copy how the speaker goes naturally. Essentially, it's going to be a good training of understanding and linking. Pretend like you can speak English. I used to practice like I can speak like this. It's literally the phrases that I have came up with. Um, this mindset has been helping me and I want to recommend you guys too. The last step will be uh, watching without subtitles. Here, you don't have to understand everything. We have taken some steps so far. I think you can understand like roughly at least in an actual conversation. Uh, essentially, that's what we do. Even like in Japanese conversations, we don't listen to every single word. Like we pick up some phrases and some keywords and stuff. Another thing to consider is I think English learning is not something like you do this and you can complete everything. You keep doing import using different materials and contents and stuff and you kind of keep building up the stuff like slowly. So watching one video and doing all the stuff, I think it's part of your journey. It's definitely one step and you are better than yesterday. So uh, we need to keep moving forward. Um, as a wrap up, uh, here are some key points to remember. Uh, number one, avoid unnecessary tasks such as uh, making flashcards and making a list it makes you feel good and it makes you feel like you're working hard but from my own experience um, it doesn't really give you much just get the the rough idea of what each word means and what the sentence means and this is enough because of the the 80 20 rule if you don't need them and um, they will fade away like naturally casually <laughs> the second one is prioritize understanding uh, rather than uh, translating unless you love English you want to be a professional translator i believe you don't have to translate like every single word the last one is and um, stay flexible you need to be flexible to have a smooth communication so you need to be chill i mean relax a little bit um, this is the whole advice from me thank you for watching this video guys um i hope you guys enjoyed it sorry it has been such a long story um i hope you guys are still with me if you've got any questions comments please let me know if you enjoyed um, this video please let me know by clicking the like button if you've got any like general advice like probably for yourself or to others um please share that uh, on the comment section feel free to share it with us uh, leave it down below and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet uh, you're more than welcome to as well all right, um, I'll see you in the next video soon.